Have you ever wanted to design your own video game or create your own animation or maybe even create a music video with your own music? Well, Scratch is the perfect software to do all of those things and way more. In Scratch, I can quickly create what we call a sprite. In fact, I'll go to the library and I'm just going to grab, oh, let's grab this cat right here. I'll double click. Now I have a cat that I can move around my stage. But it's not that much fun to just move it around with the mouse. So what if I add a little bit of programming to make that cat move around? See, I'll go to motion, this motion category, and let's grab this block called move 10 steps. So I dragged it into my code area. Nothing happens until I click on it. Click, click, click. Not very exciting, it just moves 10 steps every time I click on it. Well, what would actually make it a program is if I said when I do something, like say click this green flag right here. So let's grab, ooh look, so under events there's this thing when green flag clicked, move 10 steps. So now I'm going to click the green flag. Okay, not super exciting there either, but at least we're starting to have the beginning of an actual program. What if we could click the green flag and have the cat keep moving? Well, what we could do is instead of just moving 10 steps, I could say move 100 steps. Click my green flag. Click it again. Click it again. Oh, but it seems to get stuck at a certain point. Well, okay, so what if I said when you're on the edge... Let's see, is there somewhere maybe under sensing? No, under motion? Oh yeah, look, if on edge bounce. So I can say move 100 steps, but if you're on the edge, bounce. So I'll click, click, and look, it bounced, and it even turned around. That's pretty cool. But I want it to keep moving. I don't want to have to click, 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 click. So what if I went to, let's see, there's a, a category called control. Ah, look, I can repeat, or I can even say do it forever. Let's try that. I'm going to put move 100 steps, put it inside forever, and hit play. Ooh, really fast. How would I slow that down? Oh, well, I changed it to 100. What if we go back to 10 steps? I changed it. And you know what's cool? I, as I changed my code, it automatically updated itself over here. I didn't have to say run again. That's pretty cool. Uh, but all it's doing is going back and forth. It's this pacing cat. So what if we said, not just move 10 steps forward, but also turn a little bit each time. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's say turn just five degrees. And what if I wanted to go in a complete circle? What if I said 360 degrees, because that's a complete circle? Ah, but that means that it keeps turning a whole 360, and we don't really see any change. So instead, I'm going to put 30. That's a very dizzy cat. Let's go back to 5, okay? Now I'm seeing a pattern. What if I wanted the cat to move kind of realistically? In other words, cats don't tend to like run around in these patterns. They have a little bit of randomness. And in a game, if this cat was, say, an enemy, then uh, it would kind of move on its own. So what if instead of saying turn 5 degrees, move 10 steps, what if I went to the green category here called operators, which is basically all the math stuff, and I said, give me a random number between 1 and 10. Hmm, it's still kind of a pattern because it's always turning the same way. What if I said pick a random number between negative 10 and 10, Ah, look. Now we're getting something that looks a little more like a random cat. I can even go full screen. But that cat's really big. If I was playing this game, I would probably want a smaller screen. So let's go back to small screen. Why don't we make that cat smaller, and it'll make our game actually seem bigger. You know what I mean? So I'm going to change the size. Let's see, maybe under looks? Yeah, here we go. I can set the size right at the beginning. Let's just try 50%, because I know that's half, right? 
but I'll have to click, click the flag again because I didn't put that inside the forever. Okay, now we have something that looks a little more like a game. So I have this cat that runs around. Is there another sprite? I'm going to go back to that library and see if there's something that a cat might naturally chase after. Uh-huh, sure, a mouse. So I'll click OK. And the mouse is good because, look, it looks like I'm looking from above, just like with the cat. So let's take that mouse. I think the mouse should be smaller, too. So I'm going to change the size of the mouse. Now, I made the cat 50%. Maybe I should make the mouse, like, 20%. All right? Okay, so now we have a little mouse. And we have a cat. So I want the mouse to move. Wait a minute. So I already programmed the cat and told it how to move. What if I could just take this code and drag it right onto the mouse? See how each object kind of has its own code area? So let's get this 20%. Uh, let's, we can just change this to 20%, right? So I'll change that. I'm going to get rid of this. And now click the green flag. And I should have a cat and a mouse. But it's sort of like animation. There's nothing gamish about it because I can't actually move anything. What if I wanted to be the cat chasing the mouse? So instead of saying just keep moving, blah, 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 I'm going to say, let's see, under control, there's some stuff under events. Look at this. When space key pressed. See how it has a little triangle there? That means they're all different options. And look, we've got arrow keys. Let's grab this. So I could say when up arrow pressed, move. Well, but I want it to change the direction. So let's say when up arrow pressed, point in the direction up, right? Up arrow pressed, I want to point in the direction up then move 10 steps. I don't want to turn yet. I'm going to control turning to make it more like a game, but I do want to bounce if I'm on the edge. So let's try it. I'm going to hit play. Now I'm pressing the up arrow and it does move up and it bounces, but it still gets stuck there. So wouldn't I also want there to be a when down arrow key pressed? Well, I could drag that over or watch this. I'm going to right click and select duplicate. Then I'll just change from up arrow to down arrow. And for the direction, I'll change it from pointing up, which is 0, to pointing down, which is 180. Now when I hit play, I can move up, and pressing the down arrow key, I can move down. So I can move up and down. But what I can't do is go left and right or turn. So let's duplicate this here and duplicate this here. I'm going to change, instead of up arrow, let's make it left arrow and point in the direction left. And right arrow, you guessed it, will point in the direction right. Now when I hit play, I can press any of my arrows and it will actually move all around. Okay, it's kind of basic, but for now you get the idea. I'm pressing my arrow keys. I can move my character and try and get my mouse. But look, when I reach the mouse, nothing happens. Because right now I haven't taught the mouse that when it collides with a cat, it's probably lights out. So let me do stop. Let's go to the mouse. So I want the mouse, when it touches the cat, to disappear. Let's just pretend that the cat, well, had a snack. So what I'll say is, let's see, sensing is the stuff that senses what's happening. And look, we have a sense thing called touching. And if I grab that little thing, here we go. It touching sprite one mile, wait. Oh, right, so we wanna, if we're touching the cat, which right now is called cat two. But I have to say, if touching cat, right now it's just touching cat, it's not doing anything. So. Under control, I saw there's this thing called if something, then do something. So if touching cat, what can we do? Well, what if we hide it? Under looks here, see hide. So if touching cat, hide. 
I'm going to put that inside that forever where it's moving around. And let's see what happens. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to move my cat. Move my... Oh, okay, great. So when the cat touched it, it hid. Not a very fun game right now because there's only one mouse. Very short game. Not hard to catch. So what if we wanted a bunch of mice? Well, Scratch lets you do something really cool called cloning. I'm going to go under control and say create a clone of myself, a clone, basically a child. So create a clone of myself. How many clones do we want? Let's say 10 clones, right? So 10 clones. Let's pretend they're all kind of coming out of a hole. So I'm going to say repeat 10 times. How would I have the mouse come out of a hole? Well, what if I created a new costume? I can have different costumes for that sprite, for this mouse. So I'm going to create a new costume. And this costume, well, let's actually duplicate the mouse. Because I want to be able to use the mouse as a guide. So now I have my regular mouse one. And this is going to be my mouse hole. I want to create a, the, you know, a hole that would be big enough for the mouse to come out of. So I'm going to use the circle tool here. That, Make sure it's filled in and black. And I'm going to hold down the shift key because that lets me make perfect circles. And look, because I put it over the mouse, now I know that that hole is big enough for a mouse to come out of. So I'm going to move that. I want that to be kind of the first costume. And I can even name it. I can call it hole. And I can call this one, you guessed it, just plain old mouse. Okay? So we have a hole and we have a mouse. So at when the game begins, oh, it's still hidden because I hid it over here. So when the game begins, let's show, when I click on the green flag, show the costume called hole, right? So I'll click play. So now I have a hole, and I want to create children of the mice that almost look like they're coming out of that hole. So what I can do is 10 times it's going to create a clone of myself. But they're all going to come out at once. Let's stagger it a little bit. Let's put in a little delay. So let's say that after, let's make it every half second, 0.5 seconds, create a clone of myself. Okay? So it's going to do that 10 times. But I want the same code that taught the mouse how to run to run for each of those clones. So look, I have this thing called when I start as clone. So when I start as clone, set my size to 20% and move around. But if I touch the cat, hide. Let's try it. Play. Let's go full screen. Play. Oh, but right now, so the, the cat does eat them, but they just look like these black dots. Because what I forgot to do, let's go back. What I forgot to do is change the costume back to mouse. Right now the costume is set to hole. So I'm going to go back. That was under looks where it talks about costumes. And I'm just going to switch costume. So when I start as clone, I want the mouse costume, right? Mouse, not hole. So let's go full screen. Let's hit play. Oh, cool. So now we have the mice coming out of the hole. And they really do look like mice when I touch them with a cat. Oh, sweet. So they disappear. But what's missing from this game? I think it'll be slightly more fun to keep track of how many mice I ate. How do we do that? Of course, score. So there's a category called data. Data is just a fancy word for numbers, right? So I'm going to make a variable. A variable is just something that holds numbers inside it. Like, say, I don't know, score. So we have a variable called score. And look, when it created the variable, it gave me some other options with that thing called score. And it even created a little score thing on my game. But if I hit run right now, nothing's going to happen because I haven't told it when to increase the score. Now, under mouse, I've already said if you're touching the cat hide... So what if I just put this code that says change score by 1 right inside that same if. If touching the cat, hide, but also change the score by 1. Let's try it. I'm going to go full screen, hit play, and I'm going to try and catch the, the mice. 
Look, so I ate a mouse, the score increased, it increased again, it increased again. Pretty sweet.